Hey guys, today we're going to be having a look at this 2017 model TC5 series Hyundai Accent. She's got the 1600 direct injection petrol motor and the 6 speed auto. I've driven around for about a week, put a few K's on it, made it all nice and dirty for you. Let's check it out, see how she went. Alright, so let's first have a look around the body. The finish on the paintwork is flawless. It's like got a glass like finish. It's like it was rubbed down and buffed in the factory. It's very, very nice. You don't get a trim surround around the front windscreen, which you know I normally like. It trims it off a bit better than a bare glass edge. But anyway. Pull handles to open the doors. Got these big tail lights on the back, which would obviously be quite expensive if you just broke a small portion of it. You have to replace the whole thing. All shaped into the body, so make sure you don't slam anything in the back door. Um, to release the boot, you have a little rubber button up in there. Probably not going to age super well, anyhow. Um, finish around the back door is is good. It's nice and clean. Just got basic hinges. Um, again, this large shaped tail light here, screwed down against the body all the way to the bottom. Might be a place where leaves and rubbish tend to build up. So you're going to have to watch that for corrosion problems later on in life. Right here. Now the boot, she's got a very generous sized boot. Right here, it's probably big enough for about nine days worth of firewood. And also, if you look under here, under the boot mat, they've given you three anchor points as well, okay? So you can tie that firewood down, strap it down like a boss. Right, under the boot mat, you get a full size wheel. This being the sport package, comes with alloys. You get a spare alloy wheel. So that's cool. Simplicity at its best. And certainly more than you get from a lot of other makes. You also get your pressed cardboard parcel shelf, which is fully removable, should you want to put a folded up mountain bike or something in there. Right on. You also get, like I just touched on before, 16 inch alloy wheels. Uh, and you get disc brakes all around, which is very, very good. I feel that's a basic staple these days to have on all cars, but a lot of small cars, you still get drums. So I really applaud the fact that they've given you four-wheel discs on this car. Okay, so that about takes care of the exterior of the car. Let's have a look at the interior. The interior is again quite basic. Your driver's seat's fully adjustable, up and down, forward and back, tilt and everything. Right here. They've given you lots of storage options in the car. You've got mat pockets and bottle holders in the door. No hot beverages, safety first. You get a handy little pocket here for your wallet or your Glock 9. Big bottle of water, little bottle of water, can of V, another little cubby there, put your iPod or whatever in, another cubby up here, put your Siggies in or your iPhone. You also get USB and auxiliary inputs for the stereo. 
two charging ports. Or, back in the good old days, cigarette lighter ports. Basic HVAC controls. Your Hyundai integrated radio. Would not be the easiest thing to put an aftermarket radio in because of its shape, but I'm sure there's a fascia kit available. Gated auto with Tiptronic Select for gears. Dashboard, again, pretty basic. Let's turn it on. Shows you everything you need to know. It's got a warnings in red line, which is good. Got a temperature gauge, which is also good. As dumb as it sounds, it's not even an optional extra on a lot of little cars. You just don't even get one. This one you do, give that a thumbs up fuel gauge, you have all sorts of different trip A, trip B, distance to empty, all that sort of gimmick tree. Radio. Um, okay. Indicators are on the right side, thankfully. All your wiper controls, just typical twin stalk controls. Dashboard, it's a fairly big dash. Wouldn't hurt if I had a cubby or something up in the middle here, and a lot of wasted space. It's also hard plastic. It's textured, but it's hard plastic. It's not soft at all. Nowhere. It fits all the other trims, which are also hard, which tells me in times to come it's all gonna creak and rattle. Radio. It's got a couple of airbags in it, typical. Same sort of thing you expect from a lot of cars. Steering wheel, she's the sports pack that we mentioned before, so she's leather bound, as well as the shifter. Yeehaw. Got controls for cruise on the steering wheel. Also got controls for the Stezza. Oh yeah, it's a nice wheel, it's nice to hold. It's not too fat, not too skinny. It's probably made by Kellogg's because it's just right. Now the doors, they've got a padded infill in the door here, which is cool. Everything else is hard, like everything else in the car. And power windows and mirrors are here. Now this is what I just don't like about it. You get this small little armrest here, which you can put your arm on. But when you go to work the windows, they're tilted up on an angle like this. So instead of your typical just pushing down like a lever on the buttons. You have to push downward pretty much like this at an angle. If you follow the natural angle of your arm. Or bend your fingers like this, which is pretty difficult. So it sort of limits the fine adjustment on your windows. You often find you're pushing it too far and then have to pull it back and fiddle with it a bit. Whereas normally these fit flat on your fingers and it's easier to control. So that's something I don't like about it. Passenger's door is of course a mirror image of the other side. You can really see the tilt on the window switches there. So your arm lives here and to operate the windows you've got to push it down and then up at an angle. Mm, not cool. Anyway, passenger seat's just a forward and back on the backrest. Few glove box. It's pretty big. Probably almost big enough to put a goon bag in there, I reckon. Could be good for long trips. So the passenger seat's quite comfortable. It's good to sit in. You've got everything right at your disposal here. Oh, hey, bro! What oh, you, hey, man. What you doing? Oh, yeah, I'm going to the... Yeah, well, I had to this? pull them out. They're the seat rests. I went on my bum. They're the headrests out of the back seats. You've got to pull them out, or you can't see through the back window. Oh, really? The visibility's terrible out the back. Well, what's what's that all about then? Yeah, well, I didn't make the car. Yeah, no, true, true, you didn't. 
Oh, I'm glad you told me about it though. Anyway, you want to stick around for the rest of the review? Oh no. No, I'm going to go. I've got video games to play, eh? Oh, okay. I'll okay, see you then. later, bro. Alright, see ya. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's, it's good to sit in. Um, look, the seats aren't really comfortable, but it's sort of what you expect from a home to town, town to home kind of car. It's not a tour run. Anyway. Now let's check out the engine bay. So there she is. Can't see a whole lot of the top of the engine because of the plastic cover. But it's nice and tight, it doesn't rattle. Airbox is nice and handy for changing the air filter. Battery's right there. ECU's right here in the engine bay. I don't love the fact that ECU's are in the engine bay in a lot of cars now, but we've got to live with it. Uh, radiator is buried under here, which hopefully when you take this trim plate across the front, you'll be able to get to it. Now it is direct injection, so there's a lot less that you can play with at a home level now. You have to be very, very careful with the pressures in direct injection systems. I'd recommend leaving that to your professional, which in in turn is going to cost you a lot more in servicing. Front of the engine, quite accessible. You can see the accessory belt there. There's only one. It's a timing chain engine, so you don't have to worry about a timing belt. See a lot later at the top there. Now, aircon compressor at the bottom there. Brake master and booster there. ABS pump here. You can uh, sort of see down the back there a bit. You can see the exhaust and the steering rack. Most of the hoses on the car are accessible. So engine bay, yeah, set out not too bad. We better take it for a drive, eh? It actually is quite a good car to drive. It's nice and solid. It's responsive. It, uh, it's easy to drive. It does what you tell it to do. The engine's responsive. It's got a half decent dose of torque for what it is, a 1600. And the transmission works quite well as well. Nice and smooth through the gears, doesn't slip, doesn't punch. The power is pretty good for the little 1.6. Give her some pickies, she uh, pulls away, goes down a couple of gears. You can hear it working hard to do its job, but it does do its job. Certainly plenty to do what the car's designed for. Just, you know, go house to town, town to house, that sort of thing. The transmission works really well. We've also got the flexibility to it, being able to put it into manual mode, just flip it to the side, and puts it into sequential mode. So you can just flip it down a couple of times, go down a couple of gears. Makes it quite fun on the twisties. So you can use that sweet compression in the corners and use the gas out of them. Good. 
back side windows are good. The rear quarter glasses aren't massive. Uh, there does have quite a wide pillar there, but they do have quarter glasses. So it makes it a little easier to see at the back when you're reversing. Um, it's okay to see out the back window once you've pulled all the headrests out of the rear seats and thrown them away. Quite a good car to see out of and drive. Even on a dirty old forestry road like this. No suspension rattles in the car, no knocks from the front or anything. The only noise that I can actually hear is the uh, my, is my camera mount. But as far as the car goes, there hasn't been a rattle or anything in it anyway. Brakes work really well, thanks to the four wheel discs. Pull you up nice. It's also got ABS for that bit of peace of mind as well. Now it's time for some night driving. Ha 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 No, but seriously, let's take it for a drive at night. So here's how it looks at night. Everything's quite clear to look at. Inside, the numbers are in white, the background's in blue, and all the backlighting on the controls is in blue. It's good, it's nice on the eyes. You can also dim it if you want. Uh, on the road, the headlights are quite good. What I really like about the headlights is they just take H4 bulbs, which are nice and cheap. They're about 10 bucks each. And headlight bulbs can be quite expensive these days, up to $400 each, depending on the make of car you buy. All the warning sections of the gauge are in red as well. See there's high beam and low beam. Alright guys, so let's check out what we thought of it. Now I've um, been driving it for a week, as I explained before. It goes pretty good. Uh, performance wise, it doesn't go like a Zyrtec, but it's got a few herbs. It's got enough to get you where you need to go. It's certainly not an enthusiast's car, but not what you'd expect from a little car like this anyway. Um, it's built pretty well. It looks pretty good. It drives really well. I think it's going to be a pretty good value for money car. So uh, I guess it's time for the rating. Hey, Kiwi Nev, you want to get in on this rating action, man? Oh yeah bro, I'd love to! Oh, cool, bro. oh cheers! Oh my video game was good bro! So here we go. Um, for engine, I think it's a very capable little engine. It's not really something you can tinker with at home thanks to being direct injection. But uh, keep it serviced at the right intervals and it's going to be fine. Um, certainly got a well put together engine bay. And like I said before, it's a quite a capable little engine, plenty of torque, and uh, drop it down the gears and it performs you know, quite well for what it is. So for engine I give it a 4 out of 5. The transmission, it's really really good. You could choose the gears a bit better, but when uh, when you choose the gears for it, it goes really well. You can use the Tiptronic 
part of it, take control, and um, you can really make it do what you want it to do. So for transmission, I give it a four and a half out of five. It's really nice. Now for build quality of the car, it's really quite good. The interior isn't great. It's got lots of storage cubbies and everything, but the design of the interior is very hard. All the surfaces are just made of hard plastic. There's very little padded inlays or anything. Um, the power window switches could have been done a lot better. That's probably my main gripe with the interior. Just They're just not comfortable. And if you're used to using power window switches, you'll know what I mean. Uh, uh, what do you reckon, Kevin? Eh? Oh, yeah, well, I reckon it's got a real nice paint job, bro. But I really do not like those seat rests. Oh, yeah, Especially good when point. you had them on the back seat. It's kind of tried to trick me there, man. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, the visibility of the car. Um, it's quite acceptable, but it could be better. Um, the first thing you want to do is pull out those headrests in the back, throw them over the rainbow. They just, they just don't need to be there. That makes um, being able to look out the back window acceptable. So, for overall for build quality, I give it a 4 out of 5. Um, Kiwi Nev, what do you reckon for an overall rating? Oh, bro, I wouldn't trade in your Subaru, <laughs> but it's not a bad rig, eh? Yeah, fair enough. So, um, there we go, I guess, is what I... Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I get the overall rating of the 2017 accent. A three and a half out of five. Cool guys, so uh, I guess that's it. And um, thank you for liking, sharing and subscribing. Please tune in next time on new reviews and uh, you'll see either one of us, maybe both. Catch you next time. Hooroo. Alright, sure, internet land. I'll see ya, boys.